Hello and welcome back. This is segment 4.7, which is the week's summary. Now, my colleague Mark Gruber just stepped out for a few minutes. I think he's, I think he's tweeting some answers to some of you with the online office hours and or replying on social media to some of your questions. And I think he also left me here to face the wrath of the viewers for the excessive length of week four. So <laughs> I, I'm really sorry about the, how long week four turned out to be. Um, I didn't realize how long it was going to be. There's a lot of material to cover in terms of uh, venture financing. So uh, it ended up <laughs> dragging on for a little too long. So I, I'd like to apologize to each and every one of you for the length of week four. So we'll make a very quick work of, of, this, um, of this summary right now, just recalling what we covered in this week. Uh, the first thing we talked about was how much money do you need? And as you recall, we went through lots of different calculations showing uh, the basically the full amount of money that one would need to have. Plus, we even talked about on a year by year basis, how much money would you need in each year based on your own cost and revenue projections, which you should do and you should update, update frequently. So on this graphic, as you can see, this is the one you're probably sick of this graphic by now, uh, showing uh, the amount of money that one would expect to need and the cash flow positive point, the break even point, and the initial endowment. And we also talked about the stages of venture financing, which refers to the different points in time over which you will need to finance. So the points on the left side of this graph, we call the seed or startup stage, and the points on the right-hand side, as time goes on and you start selling things and you start having a real product, uh, then you would expect to raise some growth or expansion financing. So we kind of drew a distinction between those things. We then went on to discuss different types of financing. For example, the gift, the donation, issuing debt, issuing equity, or sharing uh, part of your business. Uh, the ownership and control of part of your business. And we also talked briefly about convertible debt. And then uh, we went through a list of all the different kinds of investors that you might encounter. And we walked through some of the pluses and minuses of each of them. And as you recall, uh, for each of these, we also went through a range of expected amounts and a typical amount that you might expect to receive. And we also remembered that this was calibrated toward, you know, an industrialized economy where the per capita, uh, per GDP per capita is around 50,000. So these would need to be recalibrated depending on your own country's GDP per capita. But in any case, what we have here is a range for each source, a typical amount for each source, and we also draw the distinction between more or less the left side, which is really seed and startup financing, and the right-hand side, uh, lower right corner, which is really for expansion and growth. And then for each source, we analyzed some of the pluses and minuses of each source based on three primary criteria, the first one being financial, how much money can you raise? What is the availability, time horizon, cost, et cetera? The management criteria, which is the support they can give you in the founding process or management or reputation value they can add, or further criteria, which is how independent is the source from you or your founding team. So I think I hear Mark coming in now. I think he's gonna join me on this next bit and we're gonna finish out this, uh, the rest of this week's summary. Okay, so what we've done now with this, if you recall, is we mapped those criteria onto the different sources of finance. This is quite, actually quite an unhelpful overview because it tells you well, about the timing, about the money you can expect, etc. Right. We don't want to go into the details of this slide because we, uh, we discussed that. We already did it. <laughs> 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 this was just the But, you know, it, I think it's worthwhile keeping this in mind and you can right. print it out and have it as a reference tool further on. And we had another Same slide. Thing for exactly. the uh, expansion the, financing. Yeah. So we have here the summary and how the expansion financing maps onto the different decision criteria. So one of the most recent forms of funding that is quite attractive to many entrepreneurs is crowdfunding because it is happening on the web and you can get an audience that is international to fund your venture. Right. 
So what we talked about this week was some of the financial aspects of crowdfunding. So as we noted, it could be a great source of seed funding. Uh, generally speaking, backers don't get equity, although we did discuss in the segment itself when they do get equity and how different countries are shifting the rules toward equity financing. Mm -hmm. um, and you can uh, use the funds to execute your project according to your plan. But you're obliged also to do that in a right. way, you know, because right. you're collecting the money, people expect something of you, and right. you better should follow up because otherwise there could all kinds, be all kinds of legal problems if you do not keep your promise. But Actually, it's even worse for your reputation if you don't keep your promises. That's, exactly. That's for sure. Uh, we also talked about the types of fin fund funding schemes, and here we can uh, differentiate between the fixed ones where you basically make a plan to raise X amount and you have to raise at least X or you don't get anything or the flexible ones where you get to keep as much as you raise up until whatever point that you stop and some of the pluses and minuses of that. So the final element that we discussed this week with you is the burn rate. You know, it's the cash management because as we said also, you know, the cash in your company is the air that you breathe like <laughs> a human being. And if you do not have the air that you breathe, you suffocate. And as you do not have cash in a company, you go bankrupt. So in essence, managing your cash It's highly important. And there were three points in particular that you right. pointed out. These are just the time to out of cash or how to calculate that. We went through that. And that gives you some idea about how long you can continue the status quo. Um, it also helps you plan your fundraising because you need to know when you need to raise money and you need to know the terms that you're going to raise the money on. And finally, your burn rate also points out potential weaknesses in your revenue model to make sure that you need to have recurring revenues if possible rather than simply you know, one-off revenues. So in a way, it makes you think about what you planned as a revenue model and there might be better ways out there. And right. it comes back to the discussion about the entrepreneurial mindset that we already right. had because you know, the good entrepreneurs are, are good in, in looking at the venture from multiple aspects right. and being flexible and trying to understand different ways of, in that case, constructing a revenue model right. which might be superior to the one you're currently thinking of. We're going to talk more about that next week in, in Module 5 as well. So this brings us to the end of week four already. You know, it's a month has gone by. <laughs> Time removes quickly. Time moves quickly. But this is four-fifths, 80% <laughs> of the MOOC done. There's one week to go. That'll be the week on value capture and growth. And actually, we will take up some of these topics of modifying your business model a little bit, growing, plans with growing, etc. So we look forward to that. And stay with us until next week. Stay tuned.